Welcome to Storytime. My name is Miss Maureen, and let's get started by singing our hello song. When we sing hello, we will salute, and when we sing friends, we'll take our first two fingers and have them give each other a little hug. Hello, friends. Hello, friends. Hello, friends. It's time to say hello. Good job. We are going to be talking about lots of different animals during our story times. Today, we are focusing on ocean animals and jungle animals. But before we start talking about the different animals that live in the ocean and the different animals that live in the jungle, let's talk about the words ocean and jungle. What letter does ocean start with? Ocean, ocean. Yes, ocean starts with the letter O. O for ocean. O. O, C, E, A, N. Ocean, ocean. Ocean. Good job. Let's practice writing the letter O. If you have a piece of paper and a pencil, you can practice using that, or you can practice using your finger. For O, we are going to make a long circle. Take both of your hands and have them so your palms are facing down. We are going to move them away from us as if they are waves, waves of the ocean. Ocean, ocean, ocean. Good job! What animals do you know that live in the ocean? There are so many. The ocean is huge. Some that we see in Maine, where we live, might be lobsters and crabs, seals. Deeper and further in the ocean, you might find whales and sharks, squid and octopus. There are so many different types of animals that live in the ocean. I definitely don't think that it's possible to name them all in one sitting, but you can make a fun game of trying to name as many as you can. Ask an adult to write them down or write them yourself and count how many you can come up with. I bet you can come up with more than me. Let's talk about the word jungle. What letter does jungle start with? J, J, jungle. Yes, jungle starts with the letter J. J for jungle. J for jungle. J, U, N, G, L, E, jungle. Jungle, jungle. Good job. Let's practice writing the letter J. If you have a piece of paper and a pencil, you can practice with that, or you can practice using your finger. J looks like a hook. J, down and up. And you can add the top line, J, like a little fish hook. J for jungle. Good job. 
Many different animals live in the jungle, just like in the ocean. Can you name some animals that live in the jungle? Hmm. Well, monkeys live in the jungle, and there are so many different types of monkeys. Apes also live in the jungle. There are different apes like gorillas, and chimpanzees, and orangutans. There are also many big cats, and many snakes, and many different types of frogs, and many different types of birds. So many different animals live in the jungle. Can you think of any other animals that live in the jungle? Hmm. Maybe we'll see some in our books today. Before we go into our first book, let's sing the alphabet together. You can pile along at home, you can sing along with me, or you can sign along with me. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, and Z. Now I know my A, B, C's. Next time won't you sing with me? Good job! Let's see what our first book is about. Our first book is called The Heart of a Whale by Anna Pignataro. Let's read the inside flap to see what this book is about. Whale's beautiful song winds its way through the ocean, reaching the farthest of far ways. His song is one of happiness and hope, magic and wonder. And Whale's fellow sea creatures are calmed, cheered, and lulled by it. But though Whale sings his tender song day after day, night after night, he wonders why he has no song to fill his empty heart. So when he lets out a mournful sigh, the ocean carries it like a wish through its fathoms, bringing it to just the right place. The Heart of a Whale. The Heart of a Whale. Whale's song was so beautiful, it could reach the farthest of far aways. It's saying of happiness and hope, magic and wonder, always and everywhere. It was a calming sonata for a wriggly octopus, a cheerful symphony for a sad urchin. An orchestra for a ballet of ocean flowers. A lullaby for a herd of newborn seahorses. Whale sang day after day, night after night, warmly weaving a path of starlight into the seagrass taller than a forest and through the wild and tangled undergrowth. But even with the roaring waves above him, even with the pounding drumbeat of his heart, even with his song, Whale thought how quiet the sea could be at times. And how there was no song big enough to fill his empty heart. Whale sighed. His sigh drifted away like a wish, a wish that the ocean carefully gathered and carried for him. Past seabeds, through fathoms, over dreaming turtles and forgotten treasure. To another, who followed the wish 
through the sea. All the way to the whale with the empty heart. Together they sang of happiness and hope, magic and wonder. Always and everywhere. The end. Oh, I'm happy whale found a friend in the end. And we got to see lots of different sea creatures while reading that book. Let's take a trip down into the ocean and see what other creatures we can see down there. Down, down, down we go into the deep blue sea. Deeper, deeper, deeper we go. What do you think we'll see? It's a crab. The crabs in the ocean go pinch, 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 pinch. The crabs in the ocean go pinch, pinch, pinch all day long. Let's keep moving. See what other animals we can see. Oh, what's that? That's a Clam. Can we open and shut for the clams? The clams in the ocean go open and shut, open and shut, open and shut. The clams in the ocean go open and shut all day long. So cool. What else lives in the ocean? Let's keep exploring. Mm. Do you recognize this guy? It's a lobster. Lobsters go click, click, click. Lobsters in the ocean go click, click, click. Click, click, click. Click, click, click. Lobsters in the ocean go click, click, click. All day long. Cool. We've seen some little pinchy crabs some opening and shutting clams, and some clicking lobsters. But what else will we see in the ocean? Let's keep checking. Uh-oh, who's that? It's a big shark. What do sharks do? Snap. Sharks in the ocean go snap, snap, snap. Snap, 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 snap. The sharks in the ocean go snap, 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 all day long. Ooh, let's get away from that little guy, see what else we see in this ocean. Hmm. Oh, it's a little fishy. The fish in the ocean go swim, 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 swim. Swim, swim, swim. The fish in the ocean go swim, swim, swim all day long. Do you think we'll see anything else? I think we have time to find one more ocean animal. Let's see what we find. Whoa. What animal is that? Kind of looks like a snake, but it's not. It's an eel. The eels in the ocean go slither, 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 slither. The eels in the ocean go slither, 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 all day long. Good job, friends. And that was just a few. A 
of the many, many, many animals that live in the ocean. One animal that we saw briefly in our first book is the octopus. Octopuses are one of my favorite ocean animals. They are so smart and they are so cool. They can camouflage, they can hide in really tight spaces, they can grow their legs back, they can do amazing things. So I have a book about a very special octopus called Inky. And this Inky was a real octopus. So the story we're gonna read is based off of a true story. This one is called Inky's Amazing Escape. How a very smart octopus found his way home. And it's written by Cy Montgomery. Here on the back is a picture of the real Inky. And let's read the inside flap. So we have a little bit of an idea of what happens in this true story. In a tank in a New Zealand aquarium lived an octopus named Inky. Inky was happy in his aquarium home, but he was very curious and he loved to explore. And because octopuses lack bones, and because octopuses lack bones, Inky could squeeze through very small openings with ease. So one April night, Inky decided to leave his tank and return to his home in the Pacific. And this is Inky's story based on true incidents. Inky's Amazing Escape, How a Very Smart Octopus Found His Way Home. Inky's Amazing Escape. The baby octopus hatched out of an egg the size of a grain of rice. His mother used her jet to blow him from her den out to the sea along with his tiny octopus brothers and sisters. Each octopus set out on a journey alone. They're born ready to explore. For weeks, the octopus rode the currents of the Pacific Ocean. He ate tiny scraps of food that floated by. He grew fast. Soon, he needed bigger meals, clams, fish, an octopus's favorite, crabs. To find them, the little octopus had to explore. Curious, he wondered, might there be a tasty morsel here? What about over there? He poked his slippery, bendy arms into every nook and cranny. Soon, he found a yummy clam. He used his strong suckers to pull the clam apart and ate the clam for dinner. Now the octopus was sleepy. How would he find a safe place to nap? He searched among the coral. He found a crack that led to a little cave. In went one arm, two arms, four arms, eight. Good night. In the morning, the octopus again went exploring. What would he find today? He could both feel and taste with his suckers. But he didn't see the long green fish swimming like a banner rippling in the wind. It was a moray eel. He chomped down on two of the octopus's arms. The young octopus used his jet to shoot away, head first, arms trailing behind. But the eel had bitten off the tips of two arms. The octopus was hungry and hurt, but he went on. The octopus spotted a wooden box lying on the seafloor. In went his slippery, bendy arms. In went his squishy head. He ate the lobster. Then he took a nap. Woken from sleep, the octopus felt himself rising up and out of the water. What the octopus thought was a safe den was a fisherman's lobster trap. You aren't a lobster, the fisherman exclaimed. Who do we have here? The octopus, 
who had never seen a human before, wondered the same thing. You're hurt, the lobsterman observed. He decided to take the little octopus to the aquarium. The aquarium keeper saw the octopus's hurt arms. You'll be safe with us, she told the octopus and poured him into a tank. She named him Inky because when they're scared, octopuses can squirt ink. But the little octopus wasn't scared. He was ready to explore. He felt and tasted the glass in all the corners with his slippery, bendy arms and his strong suckers. He crawled to the top of the tank and looked at the keeper. She handed him his favorite snack, a yummy crab. Now they were friends. Inky liked it when the keeper petted him. Sometimes he was so happy he would change color. Octopuses change color to fool prey and to escape enemies, but they show their feelings this way too. When the keeper opened the lid to his tank, Inky turned red with excitement. When he relaxed, he turned white. Sometimes he made spots on his arms. Sometimes he sprouted stripes and splotches. Inky felt better. He had fun in his tank. The keeper gave him dried corals, pots, and jars to explore. Inky poked his slippery, bendy arms into all of them. Sometimes he'd squeeze his squishy head inside. Sometimes the keeper gave Inky toys. Inky liked to take apart Lego blocks and put them back together. He liked playing with Mr. Potato Head. One time with his suckers, he pulled off Mr. Potato Head's eyes and handed them to the starfish in his tank. Inky grew very fast. When he arrived at the aquarium, he was the size of a baseball. Now he was the size of a soccer ball. His arms had healed. Inky was always exploring. One night, the keeper forgot to close the lid to Inky's tank tightly enough. He poked a slippery, bendy arm through the gap. What would he find? First one arm, then another, and another. Then all eight arms climbed out of the tank. Finally, his squishy head was out too. Inky slid along the floor exploring with his arms. Soon, he came to a hole, a drain for the water always slopping out of the aquarium tanks and hoses. Where would the hole lead? There was only one way to find out. He poked his slippery, bendy arms into the drain. One arm, two arms, four arms, eight. He pulled and pushed, he pushed and pulled, and finally, his squishy head popped inside the drain too. Inky traveled a long way, down, down, and down. Inky inched his way through the long pipe. At last, he could feel and taste a change. Out popped one arm, two arms, four arms, eight. And finally, Inky's squishy head was free again. The drain pipe ran right back into the Pacific Ocean. And that's where Inky is today, still ready to explore. The end. And at the end of the book, there's a little note about the real Inky and also octopuses in general. A little bit about how they can fit into little spaces and how curious they are. And then eight fun octopus facts. If you want to read these facts, you can check this book out from the library. 
What an amazing story. Octopuses truly are some wonderful, fascinating creatures. I have a song about octopuses that I'd love for you to help me out with. If you like, you can stand up and join me. We're going to make some octopus swimming motions. So for this song, I'm gonna have you at home make little octopus swimming motions. So you can use your arms and your legs if you want. Octopuses bring their legs together like this to swim. I'm gonna use a little scarf as well. And we're gonna follow the directions in the song. So let's start by just swimming. Octopus, octopus, swim, swim, octopus, 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 swim, swim, octopus, swim up, can you swim up? Swim down, swim down, octopus, swim forward, and turn around, swim up, go up. And swim down, go down. Swim forward, go forward. And turn around, whoa. Octopus, octopus, swim, swim. Octopus, 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 swim, swim, octopus. Good job, little octopuses. Let's move on to our next book and explore some jungle animals. Our first jungle book is called Rumble in the Jungle by Gilles André and David Wachowicz. Let's read the inside flap to see what this book is about. There's a rumble in the jungle. There's a whisper in the trees. The animals are waking up and are rustling in the leaves. It's a jungle in here. Join this rhyming safari and meet everyone from elfing elephant to the gangly giraffe and maybe even a terrible tiger. A humorous, irresistible introduction to a host of wild animals. Hmm, I wonder what animals we will meet in this book. Rumble in the Jungle. Rumble in the jungle. There's a rumble in the jungle. There's a whisper in the trees. The animals are waking up and rustling the leaves. The hippos at the water hole, the leopards in his lair. The chimpanzees are chattering and swinging everywhere. Some animals are frightening and some are sweet and kind. So let's go to the jungle now and see who we can find. Chimpanzee. It's great to be a chimpanzee, swinging through the trees. And if we can't find nuts to eat, we munch each other's fleas. Lion. The lion's the king of the jungle who quietly sits on his paws, but everyone quivers and shudders and shivers as soon as he opens his jaws. Elephant. It's great to be an elephant, all big and fat and round, and wander through the jungle, just elephanting around. Zebra. I could have been gray like a donkey or brown like my cousin the mule, but instead I've got stripes, which my lady friend likes, since they make me look handsome and cool. Snake. The boa constrictor's a slippery snake who squashes and swallows his prey. He knows that it's not very friendly or kind, but they do taste much nicer that way. Giraffe. Some animals laugh at the gangly giraffe 
but I hold my head up and feel proud. I really don't care when my head's in the air and my cheeks getting kissed by a cloud. Hippopotamus. Hello, I'm a big happy hippo. I sleep in the sun till I'm hot. And when I'm not sleeping, I mooch in the mud, which hippos like doing a lot. Crocodile. When animals come to the river to drink, I watch for a minute or two. It's such a delight to behold such a sight that I can't resist chomping a few. Rhinoceros. The ravenous rhino is big, strong, and tough, but his skin is all baggy and flappy which means that there's plenty of room for his lunch, and that makes him terribly happy. Gazelle. No one can run half as quickly as me, the galloping, gorgeous gazelle. I can leap up so high that my horns touch the sky, and I'm awfully pretty as well. Gorilla. The gorilla is big, black, and hairy. And the thing that he likes to do best is to look all ferocious and scary and wallop his giant great chest. Leopard. If you meet a hungry leopard prowling through the night, make sure you call him sir and be incredibly polite. Tiger. Beware of the terrible tiger. You don't always know when he's near, but his eyes shine like lights in the blackest of nights, and his growl makes you tremble with fear. The night has started falling, but the jungle never sleeps. The vultures circle slowly while the leopard softly creeps. And if you listen quietly, you might just hear the growl of a hungry pair of panthers who are still out on the prowl. The lions and their little cubs are sleeping in their den, so let's leave them till tomorrow when we'll visit them again. The end. Wow, there are lots of interesting animals in that book. Why don't we take our own trip down to the jungle and see what animals we find? I went to the jungle one day, jungle one day, jungle one day, I saw an elephant on the way and this is what he said. What did the elephant say? animals we find on our little walk in the jungle. I went to the jungle one day, jungle one day, jungle one day, I saw a gorilla on the way and this is what he said. What sound does a gorilla make? <laughs> Jungle one day, jungle one day, jungle one day, I saw a monkey 
on the way and this is what he said. What sound does the monkey make? There's a few more animals for us to see on our jungle trip. Let's see what they are. I went to the jungle one day, jungle one day, jungle one day, I saw a frog on the way and this is what he said. What does a frog say? I wonder what else we'll see in the jungle. To the jungle one day, jungle one day, jungle one day, I saw a jaguar on the way, and this is what he said. What do you think a jaguar says? <coughs> yeah, I don't think I want to stick around and hang out with this jaguar, so why don't we head back? Forest rhyme. Over in the jungle. A rainforest rhyme. Over in the jungle where the trees greet the sun lived a mother marmoset and her marmoset one. Swing, said the mother, I swing, said the one. So they swung and they hung where the trees greet the sun. Over in the jungle, wearing wings of shiny blue, lived a morpho butterfly and her little morphos too. Flit, said the mother, we flit, said the two. So they flitted and they fluttered, wearing wings of shiny blue. Over in the jungle on a leafy canopy lived a noisy mother parrot and her little parrots three. Squawk, said the mother, we squawk, said the three. So they squawked and they walked on a leafy canopy. Over in the jungle on a rainforest floor lived a leaf cutter ant and her little ants four. Scurry, said the mother, we scurry, said the four, and they scurried and they hurried on a rainforest floor. Over in the jungle near a big beehive lived a mother honey bear and her little honeys five. Scramble, said the mother, we scramble, said the five, so they scrambled and they rambled toward a big beehive. Over in the jungle, crawled around some mossy sticks, lived a long mother boa and her little boa six. Squeeze, said the mother, we squeeze, said the six. So they squeezed and were pleased, curled around some mossy sticks. Over in the jungle in Bromeliad heaven, lived a poison dart frog and her little froggy seven. Hop, said the mother, we hop, said the seven. So they hopped and they plopped in bromeliad heaven. Over in the 
jungle where she knew how to wait lived a mother ocelot and her ocelots ate. Pounce, said the mother, we pounce, said the eight. So they pounced and they bounced and they learned how to wait. Over in the jungle, hanging from a heavy vine, lived a super slow sloth and her little sloths nine. Creep, said the mother, we creep, said the nine. So they crept and they slept, hanging from a heavy vine. Over in the jungle, in their rainforest den, lived a father howler monkey and his little howlers ten. Hoot, said the father, we hoot, said the ten. So they hooted and they hollered in their rainforest den. Over in the jungle, come on, let's take a peek. In the busy rainforest, they're playing hide and seek. Find us, said the children, from ten to one. When you find all the creatures, then this rhyme is done. If you want to try to find all the creatures, you can pause it here and look for them. In the back of this book, there is some information on the rainforest and the different animals in this book and how the illustrations were created. If you're interested in that, you can check this book out from the library. The end. I have one last song for us. Why don't we stand up for this one too? We are going to be different jungle animals. Let's be jungle animals. Let's start by being an elephant. We're gonna stop as an elephant. If you're an elephant and you know it, stomp your feet, stomp, stomp. If you're an elephant and you know it, stomp your feet, stomp, stomp. If you're an elephant and you know it, and you really wanna show it, if you're an elephant and you know it, stomp your feet, stomp, stomp. Good job. How about, let's be monkeys. If you're a monkey and you know it, jump up and down. If you're a monkey and you know it, jump up and down. If you're a monkey and you know it, and you really want to show it. If you're a monkey and you know it, jump up and down. Good job, little monkeys. Now, let's be crocodiles. If you're a crocodile and you know it, snap your jaws. If you're a crocodile and you know it, snap your jaws, snap, snap. If you're a crocodile and you know it, and you really want to show it. If you're a crocodile and you know it, snap your jaws, snap, snap. Good job. Let's do one more. How about if you're a tiger and you know it? If you're a tiger and you know it, give a roar, roar. If you're a tiger and you know it, give a roar, roar. If you're a tiger and you know it, and you really want to show it, if you're a tiger and you know it, give a roar, roar. Good job, little jungle animals. You guys are really good at pretending to be different jungle animals. Well, friends, that's it for story time today. Thank you so much for joining me. We are still doing our two in-person story times on the library lawn, toddler time Wednesdays at 9.30 and family time Thursdays at 11.30. We also have a weekly STEAM activity that is set up inside of the Kent room. It changes every week. So stop by during any of our opening hours and see what we have going on this week. I do have a little craft for us to do after this. But first, let's sing our goodbye song. We're going to wave, and we're going to clap. We wave goodbye like this. We wave goodbye like this. We clap our hands for all our friends and wave goodbye like this. Bye, friends. Thank you. Today, we're going to make our very own fancy fish. For this craft, you will need a paper plate, 
some scissors, some glue, and some different colored pieces of scrap paper or tissue paper if you have it. And optionally, you can also grab a strip of tin foil. This will add some shine to our fish. And some markers. This craft does not have a lot of different steps to it. It's quite simple to get started and then it's just up to you to do the decorating. What you want to do is cut out a triangle or like a pie slice from your paper plate. This is going to be your fish's mouth and your fish's tail. So take the slice you cut out and glue it to the back of the paper plate, right on the other side of the mouth. You want to glue the skinny part to the back of the plate so that the wider part sticks out for the tail. Now you have your basic fish. You can draw in a little eye and any other details you want. You want to take your different colored pieces of paper and cut them into approximately the same size, squarish shapes. If you'd like to add some shine, you can cut your tin foil into squares the same size as your pieces of paper. And then use the pieces of paper to make your fish's scales. You can glue them in any pattern that you want to, or make them random. Thank you, friends. Have fun.